Hello everybody, welcome back to part two. If you've missed the first episode, what we're doing is we're basically building a model that we can 3D print that will be used as a box. We would like this box to look like an alloy wheel, like so. Simple idea, execution, not so easy. So if you're interested, then let's get modeling. So as I say, we've already done the caliper and the disc. We've squashed them down, we've made them nice and thin, trying to keep them in the top third. We've also created booleans that will make the pieces Lego together. The next thing we need to do is think about the alloy wheel and the tire. We basically need to fill them in, don't we? If you watched the previous episode, you might also be thinking, why is everything blue and red? And it's probably something that we should discuss. This blue and red mode is basically called face orientation. When you're using UV mapping, basically there's a front side and a back side. The blue represents the front side and the red represents the inside. When you're 3D printing, this is very important. And in order to view these orientations, you click up here and you click on face orientation. As you can see, it goes back to normal. Now, usually with 3D printing, you're going to be using boleans a lot. So if this item says it's facing outwards, but it's actually facing inwards and you can't tell, when you go to boleen, it's going to go back to front and it's going to cause all kinds of issues. And the same goes when you come to go to print it. To tell a printer that this is the outside, it'll know to fill in the inside, won't it? Whereas if it's the wrong way around, it, it won't, it'll, it'll just break basically. So face orientation. We need to know about it, so there you go. You've been told. Let's get modeling. In no particular order, shall we now think about sorting out the alloy wheel. If we press the question mark mode, we can bring it up and we can see that it's all kinds of strange. But it's not a problem. This is what we're here to do. So if we press tab, I'm going to edit mode, we can see immediately that this is a gorgeous model. Well done to this guy. Sometimes when you download models online, most of the time they're made for gaming. And in gaming, it does everything in triangles. Whereas when we're doing animation and working with Blender, we like a sub D workflow, which is basically quads. Quads are so much easier to work with. They don't make your brain bleed. So the first step we need to do is we need to isolate this top top piece here where this blue line is is actually representing what we need so what we need to do is get rid of some of the geometry so if we press number two for edge mode and then press Control and plus and then press delete with x we can remove those vertices and that's cleaned the model up immediately so if we look at this middle and press l we can see it's a separate completely separate piece anyway so we'll get rid of that we don't need that and we can see we've got this piece here. So if we press L on it and then delete and then L on it there and press delete. We're left with just this. This is what we want. As we can see, if we're going to orthographic mode, we can also see that the side is not matching the base. So if we press, if selected using Alt, like this, if you press Alt and then click on that loop, it'll select the whole loop yeah so when we press g and z bring it down we can start to match it in with the base of this now you can really zoom in g and z because with 3d printing you've got to get it bang on most of the time we press alt and z so we can see through it we can't zoom in anymore so for me that's close enough you know but what we now have is a thin piece of alloy wheel so what we can do next is is we could put a loop cut in here if you press Ctrl and R and then click with your left mouse button and then move it up and down wherever you want it. We can say about there, like matching the evenness, this can basically be our square edge so that when we select this edge here with Alt again and scale it in ever so slightly, if we go to orthographic, scale it in like that, we've basically made a tear edge. And what the what a tear edge is basically, when it's in a mold, it'll come out really easy, yeah? Whereas if it were the other way, it'd lock itself in once it, or it wouldn't go in as a jigsaw piece. What we need is like a plug, a jigsaw piece that we can squidge in, don't we? That's what we've achieved by doing that. So if we go underneath now, and it, this is where your face orientation comes in handy because it helps differentiate. What we need to do is fill in all of this. Looks annoying, but there's probably some tricks we can do to make this a lot easier. So if I square myself off and select one, this one, I can see I probably need to select this one and that one. Now, if I press F, it'll fill it in. If we go into number two mode, the edge mode, and click that edge there and then press F, it will automatically fill it in for us. 
big time saver. But it's going to get messy, and it's going to take a long time, so I'm going to stick with my method and just fill it in with the intention of kind of doing it in as even way as possible. It's easy work, I suppose, at least. So let me just do this. So after we do all the easy calculations with all the quads, we can think about creating a loop selection here using the Alt tool, then pressing F to fill. We can fill the majority of that. And it's actually, it's not too bad, but you notice we've got some like creasing, some oddness here. And it's because obviously there's like 10 million vertices in this when it needs to be four. So if we use the knife tool with K, and just go across and link these pointy bits here. As it's usually the pointy bits that don't math out. What we can see is we've kind of eliminated it. How many we got now? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got six in there at the minute. What we could do is if we run a knife cut down the middle here, it would create a quad. One, two, three, four. So if we go across, and we just divide it all up evenly, it's going to help massively when it comes to flattening it out. So now we have an even, all quad base so far. We need to now carry that on onto the outside here. As we can see, we've met in the middle, so if we select this one, we know that's the middle one as well, don't we? So if we select this one here to the left and press fill, do the same here, select that one, the one to the right, press fill, we're going to be left with a little triangle. It's not a problem, but you're going to get them. Press F. It shouldn't be a problem. It's on a non-visible side, but can you see it's causing issues there, isn't it? So, so let's try another method. If we press F and work our way across, we can see we're nice and even, can't we? We've come up to the edge now, and we can see it will help if we do this one as well. We can see we have this if we do it this way. So if we press the loop selection and then press fill, it's creating a lot better finish for us, isn't it? We can still see it's a bit wonky, but there is ways of solving that later on, don't we? So what we can do is just run a knife across to the middle, the knife across to there. And as we can see, it's not too bad. We're not here to win any awards, let's put it that way. The reason why this geometry is all going skew with as well is because you're obviously working with a model online that you've got for free. But if you just persevere, it's only because I'm filming that I care. Well, usually you just plod on like this. You try and get it as even as you can. And you just go around, fill it in. Who doesn't like button bashing? See, we can see we have like unequal geometry somewhere. Well, it's not a problem. Press Alt to select the loop, and then press Fill. It's not a problem. And go around and fill in these boxes now. So press Fill, Alt, Fill, Alt, Select, Fill, Alt, Select, Fill. We now have achieved what we came here to do. We've got now a solid base, haven't we? Great stuff. What we need to do now is achieve a nice crispy edge around there don't we so if we select everything right click that blue line is basically i think a sharp so if we clear the sharp it gets rid of everything that comes on from your auto smooth there's two ways what we can do now is we can use a bevel shall we show you we alt select and then alt select we can see that this is not no longer a loop kind of thing because of these sections here but it's not a problem if we select them all like so we now have selected all of these. What we can do is press Ctrl and B for a bevel. It's on your menu here. And drag your mouse so that it makes a start. We can see we've got a chamfer at the minute. A chamfer is just two. If you do three, I think it's a bevel. Yeah. What we need to do is just define a sharp edge kind of thing. So I always like to go for three so that you've got your original center line that you can keep. And if you, if you want to get rid of it later on, you can just alt select it and then dissolve it. You know what I mean? And then the middle one's always the original line or as near as damn it to it, yeah? So as you can see now, we've got a lovely edge. If we press tab, you can go out and look at it in more, more graphical view. See, it's a lovely sharp edge now. Shall we turn up the subdivision? If you turn on optimal display, it'll help your computer as well. We can see we've got a nice sharp edge down here now. Whereas up here, it's not so much sharp, is it? So if we press alt in the selection here, we could bevel it, 
But what we can also do is use a mean crease. Because this is more structural, we just want a nice hard crease. We want exact lines, don't we? So if we press tab and back out and we look at it now, we can see we've got a lovely crisp edge now. But we can also see that it's not a proper it's not an ideal edge for it needs to be like straight so it's going to go in like a plug whereas this is going to create a gap into it so if we go back in we're already on it we can basically press scale and if we scale it down so it's a lot more square like that, that looks a lot better doesn't it so now if we continue to inspect the model we can see our chamfers are already doing the bevels for us aren't they so I'd like to say the top is done, we don't need to do anything to the top, but what we probably should think about doing now is doing the same for these bottoms here. But I'd like to use a mean crease because it's a lot quicker and we just want solid crispy edges, don't we? We don't want to mess around. So with that in mind, we might as well press Alt and select this top layer here and dissolve it. If we dissolve that edge there, and then we press Alt and select on this one and dissolve those edges too. Or what we can do is another trick. If you press undo because we can't select that loop can we because it's all broken. What we can do is press this button here which is our auto merge the vertices. And if you press G twice, G and then G, it will follow the, the existing lines won't it? So we pull it into this like one here and then press the left mouse button to accept. It will then merge into this selection here which saves us trying to reselect it, you know what I mean? It's just a shortcut. But what we need to make sure we do while we're here is turn the mean crease on so that we get those nice lovely subdivided crispy edges without having to put the extra geometry in but if you look can you see like the blue fade here this is basically a sign that the uv map is being stretched in order to solve that if you press ctrl r to put another loop in and pull it down can you see how it shrinks that's basically because now the uv map at that edge is really small rather than being stretched all the way up here yeah so this is how you should be and as you can see it merged in straight away so if we press ctrl r again bring it down to like say here and then another one up here we can also make even crispier our edges yeah so obviously we now need to do that on all of the underside so shall i quickly do that using alt just go around and click till you've got the loops. If you make a mistake, just press Ctrl Z to undo. Try again. You don't have to get close. Look, if you look where my mouse is, it's obviously going to be that loop. So when you click near it, it grabs it. Yeah, it's good to know that. Saves you only, like really trying to like squirrel it in. So if you just go around and with them all selected, and with them all selected, we whack up the mean crease. That's a mean looking crease right there. But as we can see, it's like all kinds of shapes, isn't it? So. What we may need to do is flatten that. So that may be become that might actually become an issue, but I don't think so. It shouldn't do. No, it won't do, will it? We need the clearance for the brakes, so it won't. But as you can see now, we have a not very well modelled, but likely you're gonna be doing this anyway, so <laughs> we've got as much as we can decent, aren't we? If you really wanted to make it like better, you could go around and like make all this math work, but who cares? It's 3D printing, let's keep it fun. So we can we can say now we've completed the wheel. Could we not? Now press save, just because, just do it. <laughs> we now have three pieces of our four piece puzzle complete. Can you guess what we're gonna do next? We're finally on to the last piece, which is the tire, this one here. And if we look closely, we can see that it doesn't even look like a tire. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it didn't matter to the person that made the model, but for us, we kind of want a better tire, don't we? So what you're going to need to do is do a little bit more hunting online. There's other free websites as well, but I actually have a tire anyway. So if I delete this one, if we import, if you drag and then press append and then go into the object and select the tire, we can import another model. Now this was for free online somewhere. If you look hard enough, you'll find it. I forget where I've had it that long. This is like my go-to tire kind of thing. So if we orientate this correctly using a rotate on the X with a 90 and then look from above, we can see it's miles off. So give it a shift S and selection to cursor and then press S to scale it down. Get it round about. That's why it's always good to have this mode on here as well so that you can easily 
not take your eyes off the screen looking at the key because I'm the kind of guy that needs to look at the keyboard to see the buttons. Yeah, never mind. If you wanted, you could go a little more, couldn't you? Should we go a little bit more? Give it a bit of curb protection. And as you can see, we've got ourselves dire. If we press tab, if we press tab and go in and check it out, we can see we've got a lovely clean tire. There's no writing on the tire wall as well. This is why I always like this tire, so that you can put your own tire stickers on, you know what I mean? Whereas you can get some, they're really heavy, you know what I mean? They've got like stuff written on the side and it just cripples the machine. But now we've got a tire and we're in edit mode, we may as well press the question mark. What we need to do is make a box, don't we? Like a solid object out of this, so... Using the knowledge I have bestowed upon you all, we can now do some edge loop selections. If we select this edge loop here, press Control plus, and we come out, say there, we can safely say we're gonna delete those faces, can't we? And that'll keep that edge in. If you delete the vertices, it'll go even further. So now we've got this, we know that that pretty much can just be filled. So if we press F, we can see it's filled our base. Now, with it being so simple like this, it's nice as well. If you need to select the middle, you can. You just press three and you've got it and you can expand out from it. But what you'll find is if we go back out and we right click and shade flat so that we can see all these edges because when you 3D print it, it's important to see these edges. We can see we've got some like oddities in our geometry, can't we? So, so with the subdivision, we kind of need it to be at like three, don't we? And at three, these oddities, they're not too bad. I'm looking into it, but I think I have a solution for it, but we need to first finish the model before we do it. You know what I mean? Once you like output and render it, you know what I mean? You can get away with it. I think we should be okay with that. It's gonna be a non-visible issue. But it's things like this that we need to be aware of. And if we look on the bottom, we can see like a wrinkly skin effect, can't we? And we need, we'll need to sort that because that will translate into 3D printing. So obviously what we need to do is create more geometry in the middle here. So we press three, select the bottom, and we press I to insert, and then drag it in. We can come quite the way in, click and enter it. And what we can also do is turn off our subdivision or even delete it for now, because it's simple enough to put it back, but it's killing our computer for now. We just, you know what I mean, we don't need it. So now we've brought this into the middle, this will help correct that effect from there to there. What we need to do now is probably do another insert, but with this one, press M and merge them all at the center so that all these lines have somewhere to go in the end, you know what I mean? So when we back out, we should see now a totally flat bottom. That's like exactly what we need, yeah? And we can even see, if we go back in, with this one here, where is it, press three, no, press two, that this one is not flat with everything else, is it? So what we can do is if we press number one, so we can select this middle vert here, from now we can press control and plus to easily select all the way out to the edge effectively selecting the whole bottom. And what we need to do is scale that flat, don't we? So if we go into X, it might be hard to see, but we can see it. What we need to do is press S, then Z, and then zero, and it will scale everything completely flat. Press enter, we now have a flat bottom. So when we back out, you can see we've got a lovely flat bottom. This is handy for 3D printing if you're not wanting to use supports, because that will stick to the bottom like, like a leech. <laughs> it ain't ever coming off, you know what I mean? But there's reasons for supports, and that's another video. So what we also need to do as well is fill in the top half, don't we? So if we do an alt selection, but this time it's gonna go a little different. So if we just press fill, so it makes it easier to see, what we need to do now is press question mark so that we can see the rest. And as we can see, it's covering everything, isn't it? So we need to correct that. So the first thing we need is press Alt Z so we can see and go to the top. What we need to do is press insert and come in to like the ins inside of the wheel. We're aiming to overlap on this. And then we need to obviously bring it down slightly. So if we give it, if we click on this tool, the move tool, so that we get these handy arrows, we need to move it down slightly. Now we can press Alt Z so we can see. And what you can see is we need to bring it down all the way past the caliper. What I like to do is go halfway up that break there. Can you see? But last time I actually went into the caliper as well, just to help locate when you're building it, it'll help locate it. So now we have this, we can see we've got a visible edge there, can't we? So if we scale it out just a little bit, press Alt Z to check on yourself. 
we can see that's pretty much square, isn't it? But we're going to want a bit of a plug. So if we just scale it in just a little bit, it's going to help us when we're modeling. We can see we've got a nice bit of void space under there. So what that means is with this wheel, we can come in now, press Alt Z. And we need to select in the bottom, basically. So if we see if we can grab it all this way. And we pretty much, I'd say that's gotten everything that we want, hasn't it? That's actually really lucky that that's happened. But you want to select the bottom. And we can see on the box, it's come down a lot more, hasn't it? So if we grab our little move tool and we come down just slightly past that level so that when we put a bowline on it, it'll dig in, yeah? And that will create a nice chunky wheel piece as well. So if we back out, we tab, press Alt-Z so we can see. We can see now that this wheel is actually touching this piece, can't we? Awesome. So what we can do now, if we say hide this, we hide this and we hide this, we're left with this object. This is going to be a lovely object to print, this is. So we're going to need to bowline these three objects. Now, the best solution for this is creating a separate balls folder like we have in the previous video. We're going to need to duplicate these objects here as well and chuck those into here. So because we've already got the break disc ball, haven't we? We're going to need a caliper. So if we press Shift and D and just pull it up so you know you've done it, then right click, it'll put it back. Then what we can do is drag that into the balls folder. We need to do the same for the rim as well. So if we press Shift D, move it, right click and drag it into the balls folder. We now have our three objects, but as balls. It's worth renaming them to ball as well. The reason for this will become apparent later on. We need to be able to keep them, they need to be locked in, whereas we need to be able to manipulate the balls. Like if we need a slightly bigger hole, we can make it slightly bigger whilst keeping this like the same size, you know what I mean? It gives us control. So what we can do now is turn off that collection. We don't need to see that. We're in our balls now, aren't we? So the first thing we're gonna need to do is select the tire and we'll, ex we'll show you an example of what we're doing. We need to create a bowline, but realistically, to save time, instead of doing each one individually, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do a collection instead. And this is why we're creating a collection of balls, because I'm gonna show you some issues as well. So if we now click on our balls folder, it may take a while, be patient. I'll show you something how to speed it up. Can't believe I forgot. Really wish I didn't forget to turn down the sign. <laughs> You have to be very patient with bowlings. So what we need to do immediately is go to our render settings, click the top one, drag it all down so it folds them. We need to go to simplify. We need to turn this down to zero for now. When you're editing, just, just turn it off. You know what I mean? It's trying to calculate far too many subdivisions. So if we just knock it off for now, there we go. It looks heinous, but it should be okay. So if we hide the visibility of our balls, we can now see we have indentations, can't we? If you click shade flat as well, we can see, even though it's in a basic effect, what we're getting, we can see that the alloy wheel is going to dig in there and it'll help us like locate it exactly where we want it. Same with the brake caliper and the disc. They'll all like click together. Lovely. Now, there is something that I have missed, what I like to do as well, is with this brake disc, if we turn them on, even though it's this one up here, this brake disc has a center, don't it? But what we need to do is with this alloy wheel here is create a pole that comes down, don't we, realistically? So shall we quickly do that? Because I think I remember seeing an issue here. All these never met in the middle. What we need to do is merge these at the center. So if we press M and merge at the center, that's going to become a lot better geometry. And what we need to do now is basically, because we're working with messy geometry, it's going to be difficult to do this, but if we just press the knife tool and I'll show you the art of the bodge and we just go around and make a circle, it really does not need to be accurate. It's just we're creating a loop for now. And you press enter, we now have a circle. <laughs> if we go over to our edit tools, which I think in video one I told you about, we can click circle and it'll make a nice circle for us. You know what I mean? So if we square off, I feel like we should rotate it a little bit, make it, yeah, there we go. And we can scale it up now and like really fill out that bit of wheel. We'll probably rotate again, try and make it like fit a bit better, scale it down, maybe not. It should be in the middle. It's in the middle. So what's handy to do now is go over to your item and bang a mean increase on that. Because what we're going to do next is select the middle and then press extrude come down the Z axis. Mine's auto selected Z. But what we're trying to do is create a plug 
that's going to center everything for us. Yeah? So if we press question mark and we come out and we hide the wheel, tab out, press this and hide it. We only need to see this. We can see it's coming through just enough. We want it to come through just enough that it'll touch the tire as well. So if we say this much, we can actually measure it, I believe. If we come over here, one of those boxes is a millimeter. So it's probably worth doing like a mil and a half. You know what I mean? Just over a mil. Give it some. So I think the walls are going to be about three mil anyway. And what this will do, if we press Alt Z, we can see we need to put some more loop cuts in this here as well. So if we press Control R, so that we get extra tight corners, because this is going to be important for fitment. If we select the base first, and it's probably worth making this a tear edge, you know what I mean? Chamfer it down slightly like that. And then Control R, another loop cut in here to like make it crispy. You know what I'm saying? What we could do here as well is we could select this one, press insert, if it'll let me know. We could like scale this in slightly, create a bit of a chamfer, so that if we increase this one as well, it stops any issues, you know what I mean? Helps it push in that little bit better. So if we now zoom out, we can see it's slightly protruding past this base as well, which is which probably means we could, if we select this edge here, bring this down to match it as well like that. So if we're digging into the tire that much anyway, we may as well dig in with everything and then we don't have to... Oh, I see we've got an issue there, haven't we? So, so what we can do here is we need to carry on the loop cut, don't we? That's what's happening. So if we just go around and knife it in... Uh, this one's not happy. So if we help it out and just give it some loop cuts... Like this. It's getting messy. It's getting messy. Might be easy if we do it this way. Add in, add in, add in, press enter, same again, just like that. It doesn't work, let's go in again. Sometimes it's worth just deleting a face because it's not happy, you know what I mean? And you can see that you've got like a screwy face there, you know what I mean? So what we need to do with this one is delete that edge like that because it, it, it's not right, you know what I mean? <laughs> Basically. So what we can do here is... So what we need to do here is if we press these two edges and then press fill, that's going to create a line for us into it. And it's, it's all basic stuff, you know what I mean? You'll be fixing them for days. So if we do that again for this one, select that edge, select that edge, press fill, undo, select that edge, select that edge, press fill, that one, and that one, press fill, you've got yourself quads kind of thing. We'll sort all the shape out in a minute, don't worry. If we put a knife cut across here. I've cut across there. Go quite nicely on this one, even though we need that edge to disappear. Don't we? Well, we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. So, can we select this loop now? Let's go around and select it. If we go into the top view, we can see it's not round, is it? So, the first thing we need to do is make it round. So, if we go to Edit Tools, click Circle, boom. <laughs> there you go. That's that's probably enough of a solve as well for me for what we need. We could probably scale it in some, couldn't we? So if we just bring it in like that. Because you got to think as well, when you're printing, you need to be ethical with how much resin you're using. So which way do we want? Can we see through? There we go. Yeah. We need to come down to marry him with that. And it might be worth now trying to do a scale S on it. You know what I mean? As we can see, this edge here is all kinds of screwy now. <laughs> so what we need to do is tidy up, basically. Remove that edge. You can do your alt selection again and press fill. Yeah, alt selection. It's an easy enough thing, you know what I mean? But this is what 3D printing is, really. You're just going around tidying up all the time. Probably need to put the mean creases in there as well. What you can do is where you select it, if you press and hold control, wherever you select next, it will find the shortest route. So this is a good way of quick selecting. If we just turn the mean crease on that up, what we need to do is, are we able to put a loop cut now? If we press control, right then, if we select everything like that, if we press Alt Z to see through, and we'll go through and select everything like this, that's actually the perfect selection. What we need to do is basically press scale, Z, and zero, so that everything's nice and flat. There you go, as it's just a lot nicer on the brain <laughs> if it's flat. So I think we're okay. I think we're okay. It might be worth coming in on this edge here. What we could do with is another loop cut up here, can't we? So what we can do is do our quick selection again, using control, using control, and get that loop again. And what we need to do is, it might be worth doing that, is pressing control and B, 
So we can chamfer it in a double lap. If we press control and minus, that's not gonna work. And now we have a loop that we can select. So what we can do is go around and select that inner one that we've just made. Like that. And then we can send this one up on the Z axis, can't we? So that we can marry it back into where it actually used to be. There we go. That's a lot more pleasing, isn't it? Modeling can be very enjoyable in this sense. You know what I mean? Solving these little problems. And it's, it's always just little math problems. You know? So if we look on the bottom, we could probably see we could do some loop cuts in there just to make these edges a little bit cleaner. You know what I mean? Press Ctrl R, clean up these edges. Press Ctrl R, it's not worth doing. We can see we now have a lovely flat plug like object. So now we're here. If you remember, what we was trying to do is create a plug to go through this break disc, won't we? So if we select this break disc now, go over to our mods, we can put a boolean on this now. And as you can see, it's a lot quicker because we've turned down to simplify. So if we now select the wheel or the rim as it's called, it will now create a hole through it, which is perfect. Press question mark just to check. You know what I mean? And it will create like this lovely, perfect hole that will squeeze together. Absolutely lovely. Yeah. But because we've used this layer up here, we're not able to adjust it, are we? And in 3D printing, it's always worth giving like half a mil to like help it seat. Depending on what size you're printing at, seating's always gonna be an issue. So we need to change that boolean to the one that's in here. So that if in the future we need to change it, we can, which is very likely that we'll need to do. But only we've changed that rim now, haven't we? So we need to replace that rim ball. So if we go in, press delete on this one, might take a while to think about it because it's a boolean comma. There we go. What we need to do now is get this rim, don't we? Press Shift and D, right click, and then drag that into this ball here. Let it think again because it's got to reapply all the balls that the collection that we're using on the tire. But it should be a lot quicker on the simplify mode. Yeah, dear. Don't drink coffee when you're doing boleans because you'll pull your hair out. You need to be super relaxed when you're doing boleans. If you're going to do boleen work, it's good to do it late at night <laughs> when you're half asleep anyway. So, right then. Just to clarify, that tyre needs the rims boleen that we probably should rename to ball. Are you getting the idea of the workflow now? I think we're pretty much cracking it now, aren't we? The next issue we're going to have is, if you remember, can we turn the tyre on? If we look at the tire, we've got all these pimples, haven't we? We don't want those pimples. And if you remember from episode one, we got rid of a few pimples. So you should know how to do that. I will quickly now just get rid of those pimples. So it's as simple as selecting all the ones at the bottom, pressing Control plus and getting to the top one, and then pressing X and dissolving those faces. And it should leave us with an extremely long loading time. And I'm just gonna leave those ones but that's that's all we need. We just need a flat surface, don't we? So if we back out, as we've noticed, we've modified the other brake, haven't we? So we need to now include the new brake. This is the process. Oh, more than a hundred vertices, I see. Let me try and completely cripple your computer while not actually using any CPU power at all. Wah, 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 wah. Could be. Are we there? Are we good? Turn it off. Go away. Can we have the freedom? So obviously we need to delete that break ball now, don't we? So if we just delete it, everything's quick now. Turn off everything you're not using and your computer will speed up. This center bit was added and we ne we forgot to add it. So I'm just gonna quickly reprocess it. There we go. Got rid of the holes, back out. We've got three balls. We've got our collections. So we now have a three piece completed decorative part to our model. And they should now bowling into this tire. Lovely. There we go. And always visually checking your models. I'm looking at these, this here. I can see that this here doesn't look right. Is it the same for everyone? Yeah, it just seems to be this one. Here. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Brother! So we're not right with that one, isn't it? If we select all this ring loop, we can see that this ring loop ain't circle at some point. There. That's not circle. So what we need to do is go around and recircle it, make it right. And we, it looks like we need to do it on the other one as well. So if we select that one, press circle, we can see that that spoke there is all kinds of fucked up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that vert in because that seems to be what's up there. And these two here need to press G twice and bring them over. It's like they need to be merged into that. Don't they? That's what's going on. There you go. Master bodger. That's what you gotta do. Gotta keep an eye on it. 
Uh, just dropping a mean grease on that as well. I also think about your joints, they need to be crispy. It's funny how you always want to do these things when your computer wants to kill itself. That tire is killing my computer. The bowling on it needs turning off. But you always think, oh, well, it's one, one last thing to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's not. And then you end up like 20 minutes later doing a five second job. So if you press tab and back out and wait another 10 years, we can then have a look at everything. If we get the right way up, oh, up. Oh. So I do believe we've pretty much cracked most of it. If we now get this tire and we have a look at it, we can see we've got all our bowling operations on. But at the minute, it's looking pretty clean, especially around this area. Look, it's looking lovely and clean. We've got a nice like cut out that really doesn't need to be that deep thinking about it we could probably knock that down a friends but it will be nice for a little bit of a pinch gap i'll leave it for now if we go on the alt z we can still see it's not going past where we you know what i mean we're doing all right and to give it a bit of dish it's nice you know what i mean because probably this line here is going to be like the thickness of it which is one and a half mil it should be enough you know? but what we now need to think about doing is actually separating this tire if we go inside we're going to need a lid and a bottom aren't we so it's quite simple just select a big chunk like that we've got the inner one as well and what we need to do is press p and what that'll do is separate it and pour it into a different selection this is going to help us massively now we have two pieces probably worth renaming them so now we're on the top one while we're in it if we just separate it off what we can do is basically fill that bottom in so if we select the loop and then it's probably worth because it's a a joint we'll put a crease on it just to help us see it more you know? and then if we press fill we can fill our bottom in the bottom's not so much important because we're going to be chopping most of it out anyway but if we drop an inset in like there and say in the middle it's going to help our berylines so if we press ctrl plus and take the mean crease off of that as well press alt z now we can see we've got like a solid lid out there perfect and if we go on the side press alt z we'll probably see how thick it is as well if we select that loop as well we can see we can't see nothing so if i select this one then go to the side and press alt z we can see it is plenty thick enough you know what i mean plenty hell that could even come down a little bit more but we're working with the tie tread aren't we so but it is worth thinking, you've always got to think about resin usage on this as well. So if we select this one and go out, we can basically judge that that is about bang on the wall thickness on that, can't we? If we press Control r and put another loop cut here and try and marry it in using scale to the inside of that there like that. What we can do is if we select this area here, it's like basically extrude this up like this and then if we... If we go up here, we've got to scale it. Now we've got to do it a different way. But we can basically create a bit of a cavity. And the idea of this is, is just to save resin, basically. Well, there's no point in printing an area that you just, it's just solid, you know what I mean? It's just, no, it's just wasteful. We don't do that around here. Well, so if I just bring it down a little bit so I can grab this edge, like that, we've got it. What we could do is that scale it out a little bit. Grab that one, scale this one in a little bit like that just to help us. I'm using faces, you can select that one and then we can go up even higher. I just want to try and get it like there really. And if we look, we're not intruding on anything, which is good. You've always got to keep an eye on your thicknesses, you know what I mean? Even though it gets difficult. There you go, you can see it, look. That seems like a decent chunk, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it's perfect. Oh, that's wicked. Look at this. So now we have like a lid piece, basically. We can go around now and just using the edge selection and just turning the mean creases up on it. You know what I mean? These are non important edges. We'll just whack the mean crease up. It should be good. Yeah? Lovely. We've done our lid. If we back out, when you back out, it'll probably take ages to load because obviously you've got your bowlines to activate. Let's check our bowlines aren't coming through the bottom either. This bowline does concern me, so I would like to inspect the wheel now. So, after an hour of research, it turns out what the problem was, as I was using a collection on the Bowleans. Usually, this is never ever a problem. Usually what happens is, I'll use three Booleans on top of each other, and they'll start to get too hectic, 
and then you have to use a collection. So I used a collection from the beginning and naturally Blender said no. So I had like an hour's rage quit yesterday. It was quite, it, it's quite funny to edit the next day. <laughs> but basically that's what the problem was, is it didn't, it wasn't approving of the collection. You have to do them separately. I also needed to separate the break disc and make just a flat base on it so it wouldn't confuse the bowline, you know what I mean? You've always got to think with bowlines, if you've got more than one trying to do the same operation in the same vicinity, it's going to get confused, basically. You've got to keep it basic and methodical. So the remaining thing to do is, is select the bottom piece. And all we need to do on this one is fill it in. Put a nice little inset on it like this. Extrude it on the Z and bring it down. Obviously, eyeball it in. If we bring it down to about there, we basically have our container. Lovely, jubbly. So we basically have created a bot. I feel like that's enough for this video. In the next video, we'll discuss how we can make a flange on that lid, you know what I mean? So we can like make it go and stick on lovely. But I've had enough today and I feel like that's enough bowlings for one day. So if you've enjoyed this video, press the like button and we'll see you in part three. I'll do it tomorrow. Bye.